What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another vintage collection market update. Really nice assortment here. Everything from early TVC to some recent releases. We got some data points on those, and I thought we would dig right into those. I've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, let's take a look at all of the awesome vintage collection items that sold here over the last five or six days or so. Uh, a couple of Kit Fistos VC29 sold. And the photos on this one were kind of overexposed, and it's just hard to it's hard to tell when sellers do this on eBay what kind of condition it's really in. It looks like it's the photos have been kind of either sharpened or something, or maybe they're just using a flash. But it makes everything look really like the card back looks really strange, as you can see. It's kind of like kind of a white background to it. So I chalk this up to really bad photography. But it is an unpunched example. That one sold for $135 plus $9 shipping. Kit Fisto has been kind of hanging around that price point. It hasn't really moved much over the last three to four months. Here was another example. This was another unpunched U.S. card. And that one sold for $103.50 plus $9.85 shipping on nine bids. This one was at an auction. Um, pretty decent photos here. You know, probably like an 85, 85 plus if you're lucky. In terms of great or condition. And uh, another VC34 Jingo Fett sold. I always tend to cover Jingo Fett's, Star Killers, and Ahsoka's because those are three pretty popular figures. And we've got all three of them in this video. And this is another US card back for Jingo Fett. Again, it was unpunched. Looked to be in really nice, clean condition overall. And uh, well, I take that back. I forgot about the little dings on the back. There's, there's a couple of little dings in the lower left hand corner, as you can see there. A little bit of edge wear all the way around, probably like 80 plus, 85 condition. I'm, I'm starting to lower my, my grades when I start talking about these figures because AFA has basically scared me. I, I feel like everything's going to come in a little bit lower than you expect. But if my Ahsoka, the Ahsoka Mandalore figure got an 80 plus, then this is definitely not an 80 plus. I mean, it was in much better condition than, than what you see here with this damage on the lower left-hand corner. But it is what it is. That's that's just what they scored it. But uh, I might have just had a grader on a bad day. Who knows? But this one sold over in the UK for one thirty four ninety nine pounds or one hundred and sixty six dollars and change US. So that just gives you another data point there for you know a higher but not super high grade VC thirty four. Another one that we've talked about here recently that tends to be going up. It's kind of creeping up. Uh, most of the vintage collection, I feel like, is kind of in a holding pattern. There hasn't been much kind of wiggle room or movement, with the exception of one I'm going to show you here in a little while that is another big data point for a very tough-to-find one. But the ATRT driver is another one that uh, seems to be kind of bucking the trend and going up in price lately. This was another nice, unpunched example. I really like this figure, and I especially like the card back. It's just really... Really cool card art there. That one sold for $129.49 on five bids plus $10 shipping. So about $140-ish. And that's a little bit higher than where we've seen it here over the last, you know, let's call it month or so. I think we've documented a couple in the kind of the lower 100 to 120 range. So it is creeping up a little bit. Just to warn you, in, the, in case you were looking for that one, uh, here was a punched example of the Weequay in his Skiff Master outfit punched and it did have a little bit of wear at the hang tab at the top there as you can see uh this is the u.s card back vc48 that one sold for 85 pounds or 105 us dollars so just another data point there we documented a couple i think there was one that was unpunched um either the last market update or the one before that that sold closer to 125 to 140 so you know, that gives you an idea. It gives you a nice little price range depending on condition and whether it's punched or unpunched. This price, oh my goodness, this price shocked me. So this was graded by Collector Archive Services. And I, I like it because they, they took the mailer box for the Boba Fett prototype armor and display it next to an unpunched example of the Boba Fett. And this one was graded 90. I've got this exact same item that I sent in to CAS it's graded 85 plus, so a rung down in terms of price. This one sold for $750 plus $56 shipping. So you're talking over $800. And I am just absolutely shocked by that price point. Just a, a, a very, very high price for uh, the, the Boba Fett and prototype armor. And I'm, I'm not knocking the buyer. I'm just saying that in general, we've shown several on the channel where... You can get this in a really nice mint and sealed box, still in the mailer box, 
send that in to collector archive services for uncirculated grading. This one's not even uncirculated. And it would probably cost you in the neighborhood of 200 to 250 all in, maybe 300 after shipping because shipping has gone up a lot due to fuel costs. But $800 after shipping seems like a really high price point to me when you can do this yourself for less than half that price. So just my two cents on that. A couple more Slave Leia's VC64 sold. Every time a Slave Leia sells, I'm going to show it to you because she's another one that is bucking the trend of kind of flat prices. And uh, she continues to go up in price. But but there were a couple of data points for this one, for, for, for this video, that show that, you know, maybe it's stabilizing. I don't know. Now, this one was a punched example. This is the retail example with the limited edition Boba Fett sticker on the front as well as the paperwork inside the blister so and this is the revenge of the jedi so this is the retail version it is punched that one sold for 280 on free shipping now another one exact same card back us card but this one was punched this one was listed for 348.98 with 11.75 shipping that one the best offer accepted on that one i did look it up this time that one sold for 300 so 311 dollars now I, I will say this about this one um, the punch on this one was a little loosey-goosey. It was a little loosey-goosey. It, it was still attached. It had a little bit of a light crease above the hang tab there. But you can you can kind of see that it's just kind of hanging in there. It's not exactly perfectly unpunched. This is a good angle right here. You can see where the punch is just at a slightly different angle versus the card back in this photo. So it is a still it is still unpunched, but it's, it's, it's hanging by a thread, so to speak. Much like the U.S. economy. Too soon? Is that too soon? But uh, it, anyway, three hundred dollars plus eleven seventy five shipping took that one home. Now I think a, a really, really even nicer, cleaner example. You're probably pushing three fifty. You're probably pushing three fifty ungraded. Um, and you can see here that the the blister had just a little bit of wear. Um, you know, either the inner tray or the outer tray. You know, on the back left hand side there at the top, it looks like it's got a little bit of wear there. So, you know, all of those things kind of combined to make this price what it was. And again, I think if it was even cleaner. 350 to 400 is probably a more realistic number, maybe even higher. I mean, they, they, we've we've documented one here recently that was unpunched and very very clean. That's over 446, I believe. Um, Quinlan Voss. I thought we'd bring him up after his very brief kind of name drop in the Obi Wan series. Uh, I, I was curious to see whether we'd see a lot of these sell. I did find this one that did sell. It was unpunched. Really nice card back. I, I like this card back a lot, and it's one I don't have in my collection, but it's got the Darth Maul offer. Here's the back of the car back VC85. Very clean, just a little bit of wear down there at the bottom by the UPC code. A little bit of edge wear at the bottom left. But overall, you know, probably like an 85 condition. That one sold for $70 plus $11.60 shipping. Now this is one I want to keep on my radar because I want to see if this one jumps up, especially if we see him again. I mean, you know, I don't want to do any spoilers in case those of you haven't watched the last episode or two of Obi-Wan, but, you know, he was name-dropped, and, it would be, uh, you know, it was hard to tell in Episode 4 where Obi-Wan was walking through that certain area that happened to be more of a graveyard. I don't want to speak too much more about it, but uh, just in the event of spoilers, but I couldn't tell if Quinlan Voss was one of those or not, but uh, one of those in there. But anyway, I, I'd be curious to see if this one moves up at all over the next month or so, just after his mention, at least, in Obi-Wan series. Another one of these Target exclusive three packs sold, and wow, I, I could not imagine having the space for this item, but it looks so cool. It's got a little crease there in the right above the only at Target sticker on the right hand side, a little bit of crease there by the warning. So not perfect, but I mean, give me a break. This thing is like three and a half feet or four four feet long, so I, you know, it's just hard to to store this I think properly and keep it in near mint condition. But very cool to see one of these go up for sale again. This one sold for $150 plus $30 shipping. That $30 shipping seems a little low these days. That's probably more like $130 to, to ship this item, but that one did sell, and it's very cool to see one of those kind of multi-pack, multi-pack, multi-packs sell. Um, and we also had a VC100 Star Killer. It looked really clean. It was unpunched. The U.S. card back did have the Darth Maul offer, as you can see there. Wow. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. Just, just looks so good. Love this one. And it sounds like there's been some rumors that we're going to be getting Starkiller in the gaming rates here soon. I hope that happens because I would love to have that on like a, a, a Force Unleashed card bag. I think that would look really cool. 
150250 took this one home in an auction 39 bids so a lot of auction a lot of action in this auction uh, 1050 shipping so a 163 ish was the sales price that's down a little bit now it's probably a pretty good time to get star killer you know or, or at least over the next two to three months number one the economy's cratering here at least here in the US so I think we're gonna see prices kind of creep back down a little bit and with the rumors that star killer may be coming to the gaming rates or maybe it's already been confirmed I don't know but uh, I think we'll see star killer kind of come back down a little bit even further Maybe you might pick it up closer to a hundred bucks um, if you're if you're patient. But you know you got to remember this was like two hundred to two fifty not that long ago. So to, to pick this up for one fifty two fifty is a pretty good price in my mind. But uh, I think it'll pull down even further for those of you looking for it. I would love to get this on the Canadian on the Canadian card back. Um, speaking of, this was the Canadian Ahsoka and it was unpunched, and this one was graded by AFA. It's labeled a tri language card. It really should say Hasbro Canada. Star Wars, Ahsoka, and you know I, I'm I'm okay with leaving tri language card on there, but it really should say Hasbro Canada in my opinion. Anyway, it was rated eight uh, eight point five on the modern scale, but wow, what a nice one! You you don't find this Canadian Ahsoka very often unpunched, and that was a really nice one. And the sales price was very reasonable. I mean, it was very tempting. Uh, Four eighty three ninety six was the sales price with free shipping. I thought that was a great price. Great price for a Canadian unpunched Ahsoka. So further proof that if you're patient, you know, you can find some decent deals still on the original Ahsoka. And uh, here's the one that is certainly bucking the trend of flatline prices. And that is the SDCC Death Star set. Was it, was it the Death Star set? No, it was, that, it was that one kind of octagonal box set that had the Jar Jar and Carbonite. You'll have to forgive me. You'll have to forgive my ignorance when it comes to the vintage collection. I like to pretend I know what I'm talking about, but half the time or more, I don't. But this is a really nice, clean example of the Jar Jar in Carbonite. Hey, hey. It looks like he's saying, hey, hey, hey. Annie. Hey, hey, hey. But what an awesome item. What an awesome item. One of the one of the few Holy Grails in the, in the vintage collection that a lot of folks would like to have. Now, this one had this tracking number down here. And I don't know if that was for all of the Jar Jars and Carbonite because it was not for individual sale. They all had that tracking number. But typically when you see that tracking number, that means it's a factory sample or a test shot, so to speak. But you guys who are experts or if you have this item in your collection, can you look at your item and, and see if they all have this tracking number? They might have just inserted that tracking number because it was a limited edition. I don't know. But... But I, I've got, you know, a, a three-pack three, v, three pack Villains Target set that has that tracking number to signify that it is a factory test shot. And maybe they all have that. I don't know. But I, I'm too lazy to look it up. <laughs> so if you got one of these, let me know. That one sold for a 1000 big ones. $1,000. There is no way. I mean, this is my own personal opinion, and no offense if you happen to be the buyer of this one. There's no way I'm dropping a 1000 bucks on this item. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing it. It's an awesome item. I really like it. It's cool, but I'm not spending a thousand dollars on that. I'm just, I'm just not doing it. But that's, that's a really awesome item. Another one that is creeping up, and this one is uh, maybe not creeping up. This is probably pretty much in line, maybe a little bit higher than the last one we saw. I don't remember what it's the Luke Skywalker crate sold for in the last market update, whenever that was when we had this one in there. But VC146 continues to command pretty good premiums, even though it's a 2.0 figure. Luke Skywalker crate in a star case. And here it is out of the star case. Looks really clean. Nice, really clean card back. And this was distributed by Hasbro Canada, even though it was for the U.S. market, and I, I assume for down in South America. But these were distributed by Hasbro Canada. And um, it's it's just one of those 2.0 figures that must not have been produced in big numbers or was short-packed or something, because this one sold for $112 after accounting for shipping. And I think we saw one that sold at auction for like 85 ish So... You know, it's, it's holding its value pretty well and um, definitely a cool one. Um, this seller had eight, eight uncirculated 9.0 VC-164 Cardoons. So not the non-carbonized version. Uncirculated 9.0, so very, very high grade. Somebody sent in a sealed case and he sold eight of them. He's got one still left listed for $180 plus $15 shipping. So almost $200 and you know again that's way off way off of after the whole fiasco with gina carano 
where it, it, you know one of these graded sold for like 435 if memory serves so it's well off those highs which it should be but um but you know it's it's still one of those two 2.0 figures kind of like luke skywalker crate that is gonna is gonna command a big big number especially uncirculated 9.0 graded like this but he's sold eight of them one still available so if you want a high grade uncirculated 9.0 Cara Dune, he's got one still left as of today, um, which is June 13th. Antoc Merrick, as, as a number of you guys pointed out, Antoc Merrick continues to creep up in price, especially if it doesn't have the damage on the card bag. This one looks like it has a very, very, very faint scratch below the 4+. plus. It's so faint. And I don't, you know, it's just very, very minor faint scratching there. It's way better condition than the one I sent in for C to CAS, but it's very, very faint. Um, which is that defect that most of these Antoc Merricks have, is that it scratches just from the packing inside the, the X-Wing. That, uh, But this one had a very, very faint one, and so as a result, it sold for a bigger price. 135 free shipping, took that one home. That's a really nice card bag. I, I don't know what mine's going to grade. I don't particularly care. It's just, just, it's just an awesome card bag. Awesome figure. I love the colors on it. love everything about that card bag. Uh, next up, we had a lot. I thought it would be kind of cool to show you this lot. These are the Walmart exclusive Tartakovsky Clone Wars animated figures. This is the entire wave, all six of them. And that one sold for $101.01 on four bids plus $5 shipping. That's a pretty decent deal. Pretty decent deal for some Walmart exclusives. And uh, I really like those a lot. I've, I've got those at CAS right now, courtesy of Boss Bounty. He sent me a nice near mint set. So. I'm getting them graded. I'm getting them graded. I'm going to hold on to them. I, I think they're just, I love, I love these animated style card backs. It's a nice breath of fresh air from Hasbro to put those on the card backs, the animated style artwork. Uh, this is another army builder pack that continues to command pretty good money. And I documented, or at least I saw on eBay closed listings, a number of sales for the Stormtrooper army builder pack. This one sold for $90 plus $8 shipping, and that's kind of in line with a number of sales that I've closed sales that I found. Anywhere from $90 to about $110 is where this Army Builder pack is selling right now. Just a lot of people want to Army Build those Stormtroopers for good reason. They're really nice. So um, if you're looking for that, that gives you a rough data point here. Uh, here are the three, there four, there's four of them, I can't remember. There, there's three ARC Troopers that. Uh, and these are the online kind of fan site exclusives. And now I'm going to go off on Entertainment Earth, all right? I ordered five of the Umbra Art Troopers, the Battlefront II, the far right one in this photo, the Stealth Trooper, so to speak, with the yellow paint apps. I was so, this is the one I was most excited about. I ordered five of them from Entertainment Earth. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I complained about this. All five of them arrived from Entertainment Earth beat up completely destroyed. I mean, massive creases all over the place. So I sent them back. And then that's the first and the last time I am ordering from Entertainment Earth. They put, they just threw them in the box and they put one little piece of dinky paper over top of it, not wrapped at all. And, you know, as much as I bag on Big Bad Toy Store Collector Grade, at least they put them in a poly bag and then they box them individually and then they box them again with bubble wrap. So at least they're protected for no damage in shipping. I have no idea if Entertainment Earth received them like that, or because of their inept packing, I received them the way I did. But all I know is they can have them back. So I, I issued a re, or I, I initiated a refund. They've already arrived at Entertainment Earth. Have at them, Entertainment Earth, and have fun ordering from them. That's my first and last. But uh, this is all three of them. I've got these coming from Big Bad Toy Store in collector grade this week. The Lambit Seeker, which I really like. I love those lime green paint apps. And then the Battlefront II Art Trooper from uh, with the Red of Paint app. So those are great. I'm, I'm certainly going to get some nice examples, I hope, from Big Bad Toy Store. But that Umbra operative is just the thorn in my side. I just was so angry at, at Entertainment Earth for how they treated me. But uh, it is what it is. And buyer beware if you buy from them. Um, here are the Razor Crest pack-ins. Another data point if you're still looking for those. This is for both... Grogu with the Chrome Prom, Prawn, or however you pronounce it, and then the Off-World Jawa Elder for Avala 7 with the nice little weird egg yolk. Uh, this one sold for $180 plus $8 shipping. That's a little higher than the last two we saw sell for about $160-ish, $170-ish, but kind of in line. So if you're still looking for those, that shows you that the price is kind of holding steady for the most part. Got a few mint and sealed box vehicles that sold. 
Uh, this is the Toys R Us original issue X-Wing. This one sold for $155. That is dead on the money. Exact same price that we saw for the last one that sold. Uh, here was the Imperial TIE Fighter, the Target exclusive. That was mint and sealed box with a really nice clean box, it looked like. I mean, that box looks like it's straight off a toy shelf. It is just mint. That one was listed for $140, and the best offer that was accepted was $120. $120 plus $13.70 shipping. That is a nice clean box, though. Whoever owned this one took really good care of it for, given that this is from 2010. I mean, this is 12 years old, and it looks factory fresh. Really good job by the seller there. And here's the TIE Interceptor. This one sold at auction. 30 bids, so lots of bid uh, action there. $285 plus $15 shipping, so $300 for the Return of the Jedi Vintage Collection TIE Interceptor. That's a really nice box. And then another data point for the Galaxy's Edge Millennium Falcon. This one sold for $695. $695. Another clean-looking box. Only one photo, though, so who knows what the rest of it looked like. But very clean. And then I had to show you this one. This one just closed yesterday on June 12th. And it's not vintage collection related, but check out this. This is another one of those uh, first shot prototype gentle giants. And this is for Bosk, one of my favorites. And it's in hot pink. Hot pink. Look at this. Look how awesome it is. What a cool item. And he's got a photo of the back with the engineering marks. Here it is. So it's even got the factory engineering marks where the engineers are kind of writing in, you know, language there. Uh, to kind of test the, the plastic mold, testing out the equipment to make sure that is, uh, you know, going to be fine. And this was in the U.S. too. This was sold in California. $909 plus $20 shipping. Now, we documented a Yoda that sold for, I believe, six dollars $700. We documented a Obi-Wan Kenobi that sold for big money. It was over 1000 bucks. I don't remember the exact number. But uh, there is a definitely a market for these uh, prototype jumbo, uh, general giant jumbo figures. And there was a, also a Luke farm boy that sold for big money. So, uh, this Bosk though, I really liked because it was in such a, a weird color that hot pink looks awesome. So congrats to the buyer on that one. I bet I know who the buyer was for this one too. He's got a really nice boss collection, but, uh, wow, what a cool item. So anyway, I know it's not vintage collection, but I had to share that since it closed yesterday. Uh, but anyway, just some more data for the vintage collection. For those of you out there shopping, hopefully prices will stay steady or come down a little bit uh, over the next few months. If you are a buyer, if you are a seller, I would recommend now being the time to sell because I think we're going to see a, a dip in prices for collectibles as I covered in Monday's video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to my Patreon team. You guys allow me to make more and better videos and I'll be back soon.